to increase our citizen engagement, we have been supportive of the Reno Rebirth Group in their efforts to create this campaign of local pride, of course. So I'm going to wing it. Where's <laughs> my computer's gone? So with tight budgets, we have to find a way to continue to, to engage with our citizens. These guys have worked long and hard on their own, on their own time. They're 30 plus creative professionals. They came together with the sole purpose of wanting to um, put together a pride campaign. And so their expertise, we are really going to be benefiting from. And so the city of Reno, recognizing their credibility and their efforts, wants to do everything we can to push this movement forward. Um, we thought it would be important to get our employees in the loop um, and try to connect the dots, why this is important. And at the end of this, we're going to ask all of you to hopefully submit your own personal story to help keep the movement going. Uh, I think rather than me talking further, the big idea here is that, that we try to support it. And I'm going to kick it over to a Reno Rebirth member who has done this on his own time, Paul Klein, but also our very own creative director. And he's going to go ahead and take you through the campaign. Thank you, Deanna. I'm going to let Clint Jolly start us off. Right on. Good morning, guys. So don't be scared. It's not a boring advertising campaign we're going to take you through. We're going to show you some pretty cool stuff today. Most important part, as Deanna mentioned, this group of awesome creative folks came together just to do one thing. They wanted to start a movement in Reno. We were kind of tired of seeing everybody get thrown under the bus and wanted to make some change. So they all work for their own agencies, work for themselves, put aside any notions of competition just to create something awesome and very cool. No egos, no credit, no payment. They just wanted to change the city that we love. So we're gonna show you a few ideas today, but it's really just a start of something bigger. And that something bigger is you guys taking this, you, your friends, your neighbors, your family, and sharing your stories with the world. And that's it. And by the end of this presentation, you're gonna have all the tools you need to do it. So, Ronnie, here we go. All right. So. When we started this project, the first thing that we needed to do was we needed to find out what was our message. And we did a creative brief, and what it came down to is we want to bring the swagger back to the tagline, Biggest Little City. And it's not even really a tagline, it's a statement. It's been around for a long time. We had a few things up there you can see. A lot of people were asking, why change it? Why do something different? So what we did is, to set this up today, is I'm gonna show you a few things, graphic standards. We wanna make sure everybody has the tools to go out and use this. So biggest little city, that's what we, that's the tagline, that's what we're gonna use, that's our statement. It's the heart of the movement. And we set it up so a really easy font. So whether you're on a Mac, PC, whatever it is, you'll be able to use all these tools. Not something that you have to, you have to go and buy something to be able to do, you'll have it easily to your disposal. So go to iPhone. So we have the tagline, but we also have an icon that we've developed. And it goes back to the original arch. It's coming. It's the arch. And it was part of the original arch. It's been around for a very, very long time. It works great to put on a, uh, on a bunch of different things. You'll see it today as on a bunch of different artwork. Go to the next one. So the other thing we want to do is we didn't want to create a logo. We want icons that everybody can use. And Paul will talk about this a little bit here in a few minutes, but this is a kayaker. And any one of you will be able to send in a photo, a piece of artwork, and create your own logo, the Biggest Little City logo. That's one of the things that's going to be really unique about this entire thing. They can be anything. One of the things we've talked about, it could be a, a, a skateboarder down the skate, skateboard park. He could do it. It could be of a face, a family member, it could be anyone. So this has a ton of flexibility for everybody to use. All right, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Scott. Oh, sorry, Paul. <laughs> Reno's marble is embodied by decades of little stories. It's a collection of profound individual moments that have cast this place as our biggest little city. The biggest little city. That phrase, that's a wonderful anomaly. And it's special this community through history. And because this is the place where big meets small, 
hot meets cold, loud meets quiet, where a desert meets a forest, we're 15 minutes from a ski slope and a skyscraper. We're cowboys and casinos. We're characters and crackers. We're artists and athletes. There is no other place in the world that mixes the aberrations of life like our biggest little city. This is our brand, and this is where our story lives. So you ask about home. Home's that magic. This is the epicenter for us. For us, this is the place where it all comes together. I've been all around the world. I've been as far away from home as a human being can get. You literally down to the furthest inch from home in the geographic South Pole. I've touched that, that scepter down there. In my case, I've, I've broken my back and I have a spinal cord injury. And we together as a team choose here to recover, to thrive, to push forward, to celebrate, to prepare for our next adventure. This is it. We're surrounded by goodness and friends and awesomeness and opportunity. Reno's unique in that way to us, and so we choose to be here. When we think of a place that allows us to progress and recollect and rejuvenate, it's, it's a place where our friends are, where our family is. That's home. There's a little insight into Grant Corbin and his local guy, and Grant is by no means short on inspiration and passion. The guy is loaded with it. But I gotta tell you, sitting down and having a conversation with Grant is a very interesting moment. It's kind of like having a sit-down chat with Dr. Seuss. There are words that don't exist that fly off the man's mind. Things like uh, awesomenacious, superific. <laughs> You never know what's going to fly out of a man's mind. It's a beautiful thing. But somehow you understand what those words are. They, they feel like they come straight from the pages of uh, Green Eggs and Ham, but actually they're from the, uh, the Book of Korg. With that in mind, I've devised a word that I'm giving to Grant, to Shauna, his wife, uh, to this group, to everybody out here, and to the city of Reno. It's a word that I think Grant would really endorse. And I call it positive velocity. Wow. What is positive velocity? Um, it's the forward motion resulting from the actions of those who influence and inspire through good thoughts and good intentions. It's what happens when positivity is transformed into an all natural, completely renewable form, and form of energy. It powers things, it powers us. Positive velocity moves us toward, forward with a swagger that is nothing short of awesome nations. That's the way he'd explain it, and I think it's perfect. So with positive velocity, we're gonna move forward. We've got a lot of videos we're gonna show you today. Some about students, some about a, a teacher. You're gonna see one about uh, a restaurateur here who's making it big and calling this place home. And you're also gonna hear one about, and see one, about a guy named Norm. But also, in addition to those videos, you're gonna see traditional medium backups, print. And these print, each one of them, just like these shirts right here, has a big and a little that means a lot to each one of us. For Grant, big obstacles, little excuses, no excuses. The guy moves forward with tremendous positivity. 
So that's what you can see in a lot of these print ads right here. I'll show you some other ones as well. I'm going to read the uh, thank you, Ron. I'm going to read the body copy to you. Wherever Grand Corey goes, from Aspen to Antarctica, he goes with his chin up, a mind filled with excess amounts of positivity, and the comfort of knowing that his round trip flights bring him back to those friends, family, and horizons, make up his biggest little city. And then we uh, invite people. We invite those. Uh, those people online to read his story at biggestlittlecity.org. Then feel free to share yours. That's a critical part of this campaign. And I think Deanna mentioned it earlier. At the end of this, I want you guys to give some thoughts to what your stories are. Because everybody out there owns them. This is an advertising that talks at you. It's communicating that listens. That's our job. We just gather stories. And we don't get in the way of them. We don't step on them. We convey them. So that's the beauty of it. You're going to see some other print ads in here about the bigs and littles. Big flavor, little kitchen. A guy who's really uh, made a huge addition to uh, the culinary scene downtown Reno. You'll see a video on him in a little while, too. Get up. Big mover, little shaker. A guy named Norm. Just hung out at his home, his hard hat, and uh, God knows we're not going to see the end of him in town. He's just going to continue to contribute. Okay, this is on a smaller scale. That's what this is all about, too. Stories can come from all different levels. Here's a girl who made her first trip up here on a, a uh, scouting trip. She had a scholarship on it. Came up to the University of Nevada, had the first hit, a big hit, at the all-new University uh, softball field. And she's a little scrapper, too. And you'll, you'll kind of get a, a feel for that later when you see some of the videos. This lady's fantastic. She's like a lot of other teachers in here. And this is a, a print ad that gives us an opportunity. Big lessons, a little classroom. She deals with four, maybe five kids at a time in her, uh, in her class. She's got tremendous energy and conviction. And she's everything that you don't hear out there. You don't hear about a, a great education system. It exists here. Um, so this is an opportunity with our print, with everything that we do, to kind of turn some of those perceptions on their ear and just really to tell people that this is a great place to live and there are some great features about our community. In addition to the, we have support media. It's, it's billboards, so you can see billboards out here. Uh, these basically reinforce the message. Big obstacle, little excuse. That's all you can really do, basically, with uh, outdoor. Just trying to trigger what people might remember about TV, what they might hear in radio, what they see in print, what they see online, social media. Mm -hmm. Big lessons in the classroom. She was a teacher of the year this year. Just, I think, a month ago, maybe six weeks ago, she was named teacher of the year, too. She's an amazingly um, energetic lady. Okay, this is where we bring the community into it, okay? This is a digital board. And what we're exploring and what we want to get is people to get involved in this. We want to see their videos, we want to see their stories, their blogs. This is a digital video, so it gives some interaction with the community out there. They can go online, they can submit this. This is a story that came from, <laughs> um, it's a story that uh, uh, kind of came to mind because I was walking back and forth uh, last summer uh, over to get a cup of coffee. And every day I'd see this kid down there on summer vacation. And he had these golden locks, about 12 years old. Golden locks down there every single morning fishing. fishing. One day I stopped and talked to him. I think, hey, this is going to be a, this is the makings of a great story. And so I talked to him and, uh, hey, what are you doing? He goes, well, I've caught 1,200 fish so far this summer. And I was thinking like mercury poisoning and that kind of stuff. But no, that wasn't the case. I was full too. And, um, so I talked to him. I said, you know, I want to have him over to get a cup of coffee. You want a hot chocolate? So I brought back the hot chocolate and I sat down and talked to him. Thinking the whole time, this is kind of like a Huck Finn moment from Hannibal, Missouri. Only it's right here in Reno. And um, I said, well, how's it going? I'm thinking, we're going to build a great story. And he goes, 12 years old, looking through his locks. Well, little son of a bitches aren't biting today. <laughs> And that's kind of how that story ended. There's going to be a lot of beautiful stories out there, too. 
out. Okay, so with the videos, when we all sat down to talk about this whole thing, right in the very beginning, the main thing we wanted to figure out was how do we tell the story of a city of storytellers? How do we keep the community involved in campaigns? Because there's been a lot of things go through and it's always been telling people what to do, how to, you know, all that kind of. And what we wanted to do is you tell us, you tell us your stories because everyone in this room knows someone who's got an interesting story. And it could be your grandson, it could be the janitor at your son's school, it could be your grandfather, it could be the guy you buy your Slurpee from at the 7-Eleven. So these are the kind of things that we wanted to emphasize and to really point out in the community. And what we've done with the videos is just the very tip of an iceberg. We wanted to just pack a snowball and send it down the mountain and see how big it gets. So you'll, you're gonna see about five total videos here today, but ultimately you'll find out more about the technology part of it later on. We want the community to create videos and create stories, upload so that anyone can just go read about them, find out about who these people are. I've already seen a, a lot of people on the site that have told their stories and it's just really nice to see so much support coming in for this. The next one you'll see is Kristen. You've seen a couple pictures of her. Very familiar story. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows this one. Came here, thought I'm going to come here for a couple years, do my thing and then go on and do bigger things. And then, what, 10 years later, she's still here, and she has no plan on leaving. She loves it, gives her everything she wants, and uh, she's, she's got a great story, so uh, I'll let her tell her. I'm a softball player. I've played softball my whole life, and in uh, about 2002, 2004, I was recruited uh, by the UNR softball team. You know, game days, everyone comes out, and everyone would know, you know, you've got the winning hit, you know, last weekend because you were on the news that day. You were on the front page of the newspaper. You don't get that kind of attention in a lot of cities, but we know you do. I'm from Southern California and it's full of, you know, big malls and chain restaurants and freeways everywhere. And one thing that really stuck out to me, the small, you know, small mom and pop shops. You know, when you go get a cup of coffee, the person that's serving you is the owner of the coffee shop. It just adds to that small town charm um, that Reno exudes. I'll be graduating with my MBA at the end of the year, and a lot of people have asked me, where do you want to go? What are you going to do after that? I really have no plans on leaving. I mean, being, you know, a, a young female starting on a career, this town has offered me everything I could possibly want. What's really important to me is, you know, family, friends, just heart, passion, inspiration, energy, and all of those things are found right here in Reno. Not enough coffee. Um, <laughs> all right, so one of the main components is the website campaign. Um, the, currently, the site is already live, but this is where you're going to really be able to read the stories and submit your own story. It's pretty quick and simple, so we'll run through it fairly fast here. Um, right, it's broken up into a couple categories, and the second category is a quick link to what we call shareables submit your story wearables and how to be an ambassador, which is essentially how to participate with the project. The bottom part of our website features four stories. It, uh, every day that you go on, you'll see new stories. Sometimes every hour, you'll see a new story. And currently, we've uh, since the launch of this, we've had over 55 stories submitted, and we've received um, nearly 11,000 page views since last Wednesday. So uh, we're doing pretty good with it. <laughs> Um, this is the share your story section. You simply put in your name, what your big and little is, a small story, and um, a picture or a video. This is the area where all the stories live. It's a quick link from the top, and we also have an archive element, and you just simply click on the photo, and it takes you into the full story where you can rate it, and you can share it as well. You can even comment. 
The shareable section allows you to pull off the badges and icons and graphics and put them on your social media to use them in your email stationery, your own websites, however you want to um, project the biggest little city. And then um, this is our comment page. <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> oh, the ambassador section, I'm sorry. So this is where as a business owner um, or an organization, you can sign up to be an ambassador and help um, expand this project in your own place of business. The wearables covers the shirts like you see here. We'll eventually have an e-commerce section installed to where you can make your own biggest little shirts and um, help fund the project. And this is basically just about us and why we did it in our mission statement. And uh, general comment feedback so you can reach us. There's 30 of us, so all of us will get your message at some point. <laughs> and we'll just keep running right through to social media. So the website is fully integrated into all of our social media platforms covering Pinterest, YouTube, uh, Twitter, Facebook, all of the general ones. And um, when we launched this last Wednesday, we received 1,000 Facebook fans um, in less than 24 hours, and it's been pretty active. So one of the things that we ask is that everybody pulls out their phones, takes a picture, and um, uses the hashtag uh, Biggest Little City or uploads it to their Facebook page, and um, it just helps spread the message. So pull out your phones, everybody. Can I, everyone in here has a phone, right? I don't need one. Um, no. <laughs> all right, Andrew. Andrew, you have all right. Good, everybody. Um, if you guys can take a quick picture um, and maybe hashtag it Biggest Little City, you know, spread the news. Have you got a story? User generated content is how is what really makes social media authentic. You guys telling all of your networks and all of your friends about this on social media is what is going to drive those eleven thousand visits, those fifty five stories, um, and it's what is going to get it going up. So we do ask all of you to have networks. Look, I see the firemen back there. Do I see the police? So we get, come on, here we go. A little competition here. Who's gonna get the most? Guys, you guys are feisty fun. I expect more from this group. So um, we're looking to you guys to use social media and help spread this story. On Facebook, it's Biggest Little City. If you go in the search bar, become a fan. Um, and you know, definitely hit that share button and help tell your story through social media um, to the rest of Reno and most importantly, to the rest of the world because social media doesn't stop in this community. It's viral and it kind of goes out there like this. So um, that's one of the biggest things that we have on our site. What Abby mentioned was, and what you heard from Courtney too, was stories. That's really what this is all about. She showed you a place on there where those stories reside and that's what we're gonna do. We're, we're gonna recru uh, recruit stories about Reno. It's, it's great. There, there's all kinds of little things that we have yet to discover. Um, it's going to play a critical component in this campaign, as will the videos and every aspect of it, but especially the blogs. That's a perfect medium for telling stories. Somebody who's going to get us started with telling you, uh, sharing a blog with him to kind of kick this off is Paul. I'm going to have him read this for you. So you don't have to be a designer or a videographer to put your story. You just have to be able to tell it. Here's mine. My little story starts in a small house in Reno's Old Southwest. While my mother spent the work hours as a cop with the Washoe County Sheriff's Office, my sister and I endured the austerity of Little Flower Catholic School. Growing up in Reno, Reno conjures fond memories of the junior ski program, Pop Warner football, and birth of the elephant. After 30 years of life experiences from Reed High School to University of Nevada to traveling the world, my story continues right where it started, in a small house in Reno's Old Southwest. We all have special moments we cherish, treasures we keep safe in, the, safe in the aft of our minds. For me, it's the sound of snow crunching under my boots, the canopy of red and orange leaves every autumn, and the happiness of a dog that discovers mud. These are just a few of the twinkles that remind me of the brilliance of life, and their home is in the biggest little city. So what's your great stories to share about? There's little stories. I just work about a block down the stream, and I have to endure pleasantly, by the way. Uh, traffic jams every now and then from a family of geese or a couple of kayakers, those kinds of things. It's a great story. There's a lot of them in there. Um, I'd like you guys to give some thought to it, but also stay tuned in here, and you can see a lot of different blogs and stories come up.
Now I've got the microphone, so I'm really, really loud. Um, I'm Abby. Um, I'm big passion, little doubt. I have a lot of passion for this um, city. And my role in this campaign is public relations. Um, so I think as Reno, we always let everybody else and the media outside of Reno tell our story for us. Wouldn't you agree? We let them put them on these top, on these top 10 lists. You know, say we're this and say we're that. We have Reno 911, the Muppets. And frankly, we're pretty sick and tired of that, aren't we? And I bet you guys are pretty sick and tired of that too. So our goal um, with getting 30 people together, that's pretty phenomenal. This is a $2 million campaign that uh, 30 people um, gave up hundreds, thousands of hours of their time to do. That's a national news story. A national news story is how we can get a thousand stories in a month. A national news story is how we can get 100,000 Facebook likes. A national news story is how this community that's been kicked comes together to rise together to tell our story. Um, I've done national news for people like Donald Trump. Um, I've done national news for Mammoth Mountain, for a lot of places. So um, our role, my goal here is to take what we're all doing, the stories you guys are going to tell, and get the Today Show out here, to get Good Morning America out here, to get the national news to start saying what is really good, really positive, and really passionate about this amazing community. So um, PR plays a big role in this campaign. But for me to go out there and for Natasha and for Andrew and Crystal, some of our other PR team members, and push that story, we need to get a thousand stories on this site. We need you guys to do that first. So if you can do anything for us today to help this $2 million gift grow and to help the Today Show get here, please go and share that story. Thank you. All right, here we go. Abby talked about some of those perceptions that are out there, and one of them, as I mentioned earlier, is about education. This is a great opportunity to really not even pay attention to that, but just to kind of, with positive velocity, move forward by talking about things like a great education system, and there's nobody better to talk to it than Donna. You're going to hear her here. She's got great energy, and, uh, well, I'm going to let her tell the story. I don't know, I'm not involved with all the administration part. I'm with, on the grassroots, down here with the teachers, with the kids. And I know at ground level, it is fabulous. Everyone's trying their hardest for kids to love to come to school and to love to learn and to love each other and respect each other. That's why I'm proud. <laughs> this is my 17th year, and I've taught kindergarten, first, fourth, fifth, writing, resource. I mean, all different types. And I absolutely love it. I love to come to work every day. I don't even call it work. The teachers I work with, and this is my fourth school, and every school, they work so hard. And I wish everyone would know that. We don't clock off. You take that work home every night. You are working on the weekends. It is countless hours because we love the kids. So they have the mind, the expertise, the knowledge, the intelligence. They've got the heart. And that's what makes all of our teachers at this school and every single school I've been at, that's what they have, those ingredients to make a great teacher. And with great teachers, we're going to have a great school system. Biggest little city. It is. It has that small town feel because I have lived in many, many towns around the world. But this has, it feels small and I love small towns. People work together and try to help each other. And if we have an idea, yeah, go for it. Take action. Don't just have an idea. Work on it. You know, do something. To so be positive and see the positive in our community. And just, if there's a problem, don't mind about it. Change things and make it better. Okay, um, one of the cool things is we want to develop apps. So there's a lot of people who can get involved with this personally. And Paul will tell you a little bit more about that. We've got two apps that we're working on so that people can create their own icon. You saw the teacher had an apple, Kristen had a cowboy boot. It's anything you want it to be. You take a picture of anything, and we have a program that will silhouette it, add biggest little city, and then you have your own logo. So there isn't one logo that we have to be married to. It's anything that you imagine that identifies your biggest little city. You upload the photo like this. This is our city hall. Creates a silhouette, you choose your picture. The finished product is Biggest Little City. You can buy a print, make a shirt, make a sticker. 
The video piece works similar, where you'll be able to download this app, create a video, and uh, it'll walk you through the steps. Tell us why the biggest city, what the biggest little city means to you, and then simply share it. So we want this to really be organic for the people, the snowball effect, and it is working. 11,000 views in five days, 1,500 likes in five days on Facebook. The, the, the response already is massive, and it's just the beginning. And uh, like Abby said, 100,000 likes isn't, isn't that far off. So uh, I'm gonna turn it over for business part participation. Okay, we want businesses to get involved. So the way we can do that is we're gonna give them the tools to get their big and their little. They can develop t-shirts for employees, but this is a piece right here. We wanna, this is a counter card that they could have and we, we used a um, coffee house as an example. Big aroma, little beans. Learn more about our story at the website. They'll have business cards, t-shirts, the whole, all the tools to be involved from the smallest business to the largest business. Cutouts. And we're gonna, our ambassadors, which these five people that you've seen so far, they're gonna be out there. They're gonna be at hot August nights. They're gonna be doing all those things. So with these, you're gonna be able to push this button. They're gonna be voice automated. It's gonna tell a little bit about the story. So we wanna have the tools to get these guys out there as much as we can, tell every person our story. So. The other, the other thing we wanna do is we develop a trade show display. We want to build this. We want to make it the coolest trade show at any event in town, hot artist nights, any of those things, at air races. We want to build this. People can walk through it and read all those stories. Not everybody's going to get the message through social media, all the different things, ways, but we want to give them everything we can get to them. We couldn't share the story of Reno without uh making mention of a, of a man with tremendous tenacity, vision, and generosity. Um, he just hung up his helmet, his hard hat, last Sunday, but trust me, he's going to be totally involved in this community. He's a little man named Norman. This is his story. Well, I think Northern Nevada is a wonderful place to live. I've had a lot of success in business in this community. I've taken risks, some have paid off. You know, my family thinks I'm nuts with some of the stuff I do, but uh, you know, sometimes you just take a chance and you hope your vision pays off. And, uh, what we've done here, we've taken an uh, old landfill that had no real use or value. We've created something that is uh, a world-class truck racing uh, track right now. It's uh, quite an experience. I've never done it in the trucks, but uh, this year I think I'm going to have one of those good drivers take me for a ride. You know, sometimes you just take a chance and you hope your vision pays off. And I really think the vision of what we're trying to do here will pay off in the future and provide some great events for this community. All right, so one of the other things that we've done is, and it, we've already given away 300 of them, is we've developed shirts. And you can fill in your big and your little. And this is the start of getting involved in this campaign. Ultimately, you want to have your own printed one, which you can go to the website and do. But these have been really popular. We've given them to them. You can think about it. You can write, you can write it in right now. OK, the other thing is, is um, we're going to close, and we're going to close with Abby, and I wonder when she was a little girl, if her parents knew with that voice she was going to be a PR, right? <laughs> um, but Abby is the person, she was the one who put all, all the pieces together on this, so with that, I'm going to let her close. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, I don't know if you guys read the story about Norm, you know, kind of stepping down and letting Chris and Mike kind of roll out with the business and Lance, but in that story, he talked about this campaign. Um, I think part of the beauty of this is you see people like Norm that have been here for generations building this city, embracing this. He has been taking me around town and um, putting me in front of people that normally wouldn't give me the time of day and letting um, us tell them about this campaign and they 
have been like, can I write a check? What can I do? This is amazing. Oh my gosh, thank you. Why are you guys doing this? The passion of kind of the generation that's been here um, building this town and the passion of the generation that's going to continue building this town is what makes this campaign. But one thing it definitely needs to keep going, but there's a few things, support, um, excitement, energy, and money. Um, you know, the production, the creative of putting all of this together, um, as I said, equaled about $2 million. And now we're planning to roll it out. Um, we've been leveraging all of our relationships with everybody in town um, to get some donated advertising, um, to get some businesses. We met with um, the new coach of the UNO football team yesterday, and um, they're pretty excited, and hopefully we could see some, some cool parts of this campaign roll out. Um, with the university and the football team. Um, we're gonna meet with Dolan Automotive Group this week and we're, uh, um, our goal is that they'll take some of their advertising budget and make this their campaign. Um, so what I ask of you guys is, you know business owners, um, you know influencers, you know people in this community that would love to support this and that would love to make it happen. So while when we were doing this campaign, we got offered money from quite a few people and we said no. In fact, we put on a fundraiser on our own to um, kind of get the funds we needed to do this. We wanted this to be pure, and we wanted it to be organic, and we did not want it to be influenced um, by anybody at all. But now we need some dough to roll it out. Um, so I guess that's kind of, I'm here for the ask. Just please spread the word, let people know the city is definitely um, you know, gonna be a big part of this. When we presented to city council immediately after we did this, we got an ovation. Um, and Naoma actually the next day called us and asked for 30 t-shirts that said, Big United, Little Divided. And you probably saw that. Maybe some of you guys obviously wore those at your meeting. And to us, we were like, they're listening. They're, they're into it. I mean, it was like the biggest reward we could have ever gotten. So um, that's what we need, that's what we want. We're looking to you guys. Tell your story, spread the word, Get excited, get passionate, because this is your biggest little city. Um, and we're here to tell that story and not let someone else tell it for us. Thank you. Hey guys, we're gonna take a page from Mackey Stadium and Easton Stadium. We only have about six, seven t-shirts right here, so in an effort to be really even-handed about it, get your gloves up and get ready for some cash.